Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. We'll bust in, it's the day after. Now, I haven't had a good day's diving since December last year. While I was editing Rick's video, which is a previous episode, I'll put a link in the description and it should come up at the end of this video. While I was editing that video, I was going back through my hard drive and there were some dives at the back end of last year that I haven't used in any episodes yet. So this video, I'll run through some of those clips. There's some pretty cool dives in there that I, that I just didn't use for some reason. I think I just forgot that they were even there. As well as that, not being able to dive, I've done a heap of work on the boat. So we'll go through I'll go through all that in this episode as well. And on top of that, over the Christmas period, something pretty exciting happened for me and for Exhale Adventures, but I'll talk about that at the end of the episode. So we'll kick this one off with an update on the project boat. From there, we'll go straight into the diving and then a special announcement for Exhale Adventures. Cheers. So I'm out here in the shed um, with the Haynes project, 565C. Last lot of days off, I glass the floor in gave it a sand, tidied up all these all these edges and stuff. It's it's come up pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. But this is gonna be my process. Looks like quite a mess there at the moment, but there is a method to my madness. So what I'm planning is I'll complete this front area. I'll just finish it and then I'll wet out as far as I can reach with this first layer. Second layer. And just work my way across the middle to S. You'll see there's no there's no joins um, line up anywhere yet, and they shouldn't at all. So I'll wet all that out, roll all that out, happy days. And then obviously third layer, I'll do the same. I'll roll it out, wet it all out. So I'll come back and meter, wet it all out. Roll this out again as far as I can reach, do all the same here. And I'll just keep repeating that until I back myself into the, um, into the well here. I can reach quite easily out to sort of where I was kneeling before. And I can sort of access this whole, this whole video. So the floor is in. All glassed in, it's the day after. I'm gonna give it all a bit of a sand. Um, it all went really well. The only slight hiccup I had was just here. There's two little lumps of um, hard resin that I think I walked in on my boots. Um, we're back in the shed. Let's move on to the diving. There'll be footage from like four or five different days. So I'll just run through it all like what I normally do. Um, hope you enjoy and I'll see you on the other side. I'll start this one off with a quick plug for Neptune's crew. The guys from Neptune's crew just randomly sent me a message on Instagram. They're based in Yapoon, sent me a shirt. They didn't ask for anything in return. They just liked the channel and just wanted to support the channel. Thanks heaps guys, I'll return the favour as best I can. Um, if you want to check them out, jump on their Instagram page. Cheers boys. Righto, onto the diving. On this day there wasn't much happening. I had this small school of diamond trevallies swim up to me. I've never seen these guys in the water before, so it's pretty cool to have them come up. I'm pretty sure they're not the best eating quality, so I didn't take one on this day. Righto, let's get on to spearing some fish. Now on this day, there was a little bit of visibility, but it wasn't the best. I had probably six to seven meters viz, and I was diving in water around 10 to 12 meters deep. So I was basically heading down to the bottom, and each dive I'd sort of scan around and see if there's anything worth diving on the next dive. As well as doing this, I'm obviously looking for fish. You can see I move forward here and get a pretty good position. And just hold for a little bit, have a little bit of a look around. When I'm moving here, I'm not kicking. I'm just using my hands to just pull myself along the rocks. I notice a trout here, move from left to right.
I don't just charge after the fish, I still just slowly move towards it so I don't spook it. I put in a long shot, but it ends up being a well positioned shot. If you ever dive the Mackay Coast, you're almost guaranteed a trout. This is a more standard trout encounter. Just as I get to the bottom, I see a trout move over closer to his bommy. It's pretty well line up and take a shot. I didn't quite hit the fish where I hoped, but even if you do hit the fillet on a trout, you'll put a hole through the fillet obviously. You only get a very small blood spot around the hole. And at the end of the day, the fish is in the esky. Now I'll put this next clip in, it's very dirty diving and I'm chasing mangrove jack. You can see how shallow it is here. I've had this school of jacks move up to me multiple times, but I never really had a good shot. So when this is happening, it's key to just sit on the bottom, be as relaxed as you can, stay down there as long as you can. And they should come back in and give you a chance of getting a good shot. Alright, I put this next one in because it's a 2 minute plus dive. On this particular day I was super comfortable. I would not long done my level 2 freediver course. I was feeling good, I was very relaxed. And you can really tell by the way I'm moving on the bottom how comfortable I was on this day. Now as I get to the bottom I see a trout move from my right around to the left around the back of that bommie. I knew it would be over that way somewhere, I didn't exactly know where. So I just very slowly made my way over there. And when the water's dirty like this, you'll often find trout just looking at you head on and you don't really notice until it's too late and you get too close and spook them. So I very, very slowly moved across. You see me looking down here every so often as I'm moving. What I'm actually doing is looking where I'm putting my hands. I really don't want to break any of the little soft coral and stuff like that. And I'm also checking to make sure there's no stonefish. We do get stonefish in Mackay and I'd hate to put my hand on one. I noticed that little puff of sand and I honestly thought it would have just went straight out the back of that bombie and it was gone. But to my surprise he was still tucked in there staring back at me. So right about the two minute mark here, it's time to head up and get a breath of air. That's another quality trout out off the coast of Mackay. Righto guys, if you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook, you may have seen my story. Spiro's come on board with the channel. They contacted me a few weeks ago, um, sent me some information about the company. I've decided to um, give their wetsuits and stuff a run. So this is what the guys at Spiro have sent me. I've got a, I think it's a three mil wetty, three and a half mil wetty, come with long johns. Massive catch bag. I reckon it's gonna be really good for when I'm burling up the Spanish and when we're out blue water hunting and stuff. I'll be able to keep my burley in this bag, just have it on a float, and then I can, um, yeah, just dish out, you know, herring and pilchards and stuff like that. Gave me a cool new hat, heap of gun sleeves. We got the um, the head mount that runs in the top of the hood. So there's like a sleeve in the top of the hood. It's a pretty cool concept. Gloves look pretty cool. All the same sort of colour. Look like a pretty tough palm. They'll be good for grabbing crays and stuff like that. A pair of socks. Thanks, Fair. I'm keen to give it all a bit of a run. It's um it's far like 25 knots today and 
it's either been blowing 25s or raining for like the last couple of months so um yeah give it a few more weeks the weather will come good and we'll start getting out a little bit more hope you enjoyed that one guys thanks for watching if you did enjoy it please like subscribe share it around and i'll catch you on the next one cheers